After yet another pathetic performance from Potter's Blues, we tried to get back on the horse this week versus another difficult prospect, Manchester United, under the lights at Stamford Bridge. Lads, lasses and the rest of the masses, welcome to the lead-in. Let's set the scene here. It's Chelsea vs United, 12th in the Premier League vs 6th. I seem to say this every match week, but this is a very important game for us as it presents an opportunity to close the gap to the teams above us. We currently have a game in hand on Wolves, Brighton and Newcastle ahead of us, and two games on West Ham. With us sitting on 40 points, we are still within reach of 7th place, as the teams ahead of us have been so inconsistent. We must take advantage this week. So, we need to get past United first in order to do that, a team that has been as inconsistent as we have this season, but somehow find themselves up in 6th place. Form-wise, they are dead even, 2 wins, 2 losses and 1 draw in their last 5, with the draw coming last time out against Brentford, a game in which they were absolutely dominated, but just managed to hold on and somehow get a draw, despite the 31 shots that they faced. They'll be looking to put in a much better performance against us, so let's take a brief look at how their team could line up. Firstly, let's talk absentees. United have a decent chunk of players missing. Luke Shaw, Anthony Martial and Tyrell Malassia all remain sidelined with Raphael Varane, Victor Lindelof, Altai Bayendir and Johnny Evans all being doubts for this one as well. I'll be putting Eric Ten Hag's side into a standard 4-2-3-1 formation, but those above injuries may make him change setups come the match. First up in goal though is going to be their number one, Andre Onana. Not much to say here, he's obviously going to start, especially with their number two injured. The defence is going to be changed from the 1-1 draw with Brentford, but once again, starting on the right side will be the Portuguese Diogo Dallo. The centre-back partnership could see wholesale changes, with injuries to both Varane and Lindelof, it's a return to a familiar centre-back pairing of Harry Maguire on the right, and the recently returning from injury Lissandro Martinez on the left. The left back is also a problem area for United, with Luke Shaw and Tyrell Malassia both injured, Aaron Wan-Bissaka will fill in here once more. Moving into the midfield, we'll start with the two deeper roles. Despite scoring in the last fixture, I don't see a place for ex-Chelsea man Mason Mount, and I expect both Kobe Mainu and Scott McTominay, who scored against us twice in the reverse fixture, to retain their places. Ahead of them, for the attacking midfield roles, we'll start on the right. Ahmad Diallo is back from suspension, but I don't expect him nor Anthony to replace Alejandro Garnacho. In the centre or 10 position, it's pretty obvious that Bruno Fernandes will start once more. And finally, over on the left, it's going to be another start for Marcus Rashford. That leaves the one man up top, so in the solo striker role will of course be young Dane Rasmus Hoyland to lead the line. As I said, just a brief overview of what I expect their team to look like. There could be more rotation in the side considering how poor they were last time out, but I don't expect too much to happen in truth. Now let's quickly take a look at how Chelsea could line up. The amount of injuries we have is almost too long to list, with us now having 11 first team injuries, so today's lineup will be far from our first choice. I think that we'll continue to use the 4-2-3-1 despite this, with a very disjointed backline, and as ever I'm going to show what I expect Pochettino to pick, and then show my own personal picks afterwards. Starting with the goalkeeper, I'm going to be putting in Georgi Petrovic. Robert Sanchez is one of the injured players, but Petro would most likely have started anyway, despite his howler for the second goal last time out. The back four is going to be changed from our last fixture with more injuries hitting this part of the squad, so starting with the right back it's going to be another wide right shift for Axel Di Sassi, as Malagusto came off with a hamstring injury and probably won't be risked here. That also means that the centre back pairing will change, so moving into Di Sassi's vacant right centre back role will be Thiago Silva alongside Benoit Badia-Shiel on the left. Finally, over at left back will once again be Mark Kukurea, Ben Chilwell will be assessed for this game but I don't expect him to start. Moving into the middle, we'll start with the holding roles. This is the one place where I don't expect any change, with the ever-brilliant pairing of Moises Caicedo and Enzo Fernandez retaining their places at the base of midfield. Ahead of them, in the attacking midfield roles, let's start on the right. After his two goals and basically being the only player in our team that knows how to play football at the moment, Cole Palmer of course retains his place. Moving centrally, I don't expect Poch's obsession with Conor Gallagher to cease, so he once again plays in the 10. Over on the left is going to be another start for Mikhailo Mudrik, who I was surprised to see start last time out, and was another one of the only players that looked good versus Burnley. Up top will of course be Nicholas Jackson, whose goal scoring form dried up in the previous fixture, but up against a rotated backline he'll be hoping to get some change out of the United defence. This is what I'm expecting, but what would I personally change? Well, as I often say, not much can change due to the extensive injury list, but I do have a couple of things I would personally move around. We'll start with the back line, where I do believe there's the option of using Alfie Gilchrist, who's just signed a new contract with the club, so congrats to him, at right back, with Di Sassi retaining his place in right centre-back. 
There's definitely something weird going on with Poch and Silver, so I'm not sure which is more likely. Moving further up the pitch, I would like to see change here too. Gallagher was utterly awful against Burnley and has been an awful 10 all season in truth. I'd rather see Madrid play here, which of course means that either Noni Madueke or Raheem Sterling would have to start on the left. And Sterling is obviously the more comfortable on that side, so that is who I would go with despite my reservations about Raz. Alternatively, Palmer could take the central role and Noni could come into the right-sided role with Madrid moving out to the left, but I don't think Misha is as effective when he's isolated on the wing. Now I want to talk about youth players, with the amount of injuries we have and keep getting I heavily implore Poch to start using the tools at his disposal and start looking at the youngsters that are making the bench. In my personal opinion, Josh Coffier Chempong should be given a chance to play at right back if Gusto isn't able to play. He's gotten on the bench multiple times now and he's our only other natural right back in the team, so why not throw him into the lineup and give him the chance to impress? We've seen what's happened with Connick Bradley at Liverpool, we need to invest in our own youth. Likewise, Cesare Cassidy should be playing in some capacity. It's criminal that he's been recalled from his loan at Leicester and forced to rot on the bench the entire time. With Poch always complaining about not having height or aerial presence in his midfield, Cassidy is the most obvious solution and should at least be getting late cameos to try and snatch a goal from a set piece or something. David Washington, where's his chance? With us only having one senior striker at the club, it's incredibly weird for Poch to not be using him as his substitute striker, especially considering the injury record at Chelsea right now. We bought him for about 16 million and he's had only 23 minutes in all comps for the first team. Some others that I want to briefly mention that should be played more, Tyreek George, Jimmy Torreinen and Leo Castledine. So those are my lineups and I'd like to hear from you guys too, so for today's question of the day, answer me this. If we lose this game, are you Poch in? or potch out and why. Let me know in the comments down below with QOTD at the start as always and I'll pin my favourite answer. Now as I so often do, as we've played United in the past, I'm going to highlight where I believe we can take positives from the reverse fixture and where we can improve in order to get a result against them here. Last time we faced them was back in December, a 2-1 loss that was overall an utterly abysmal performance. In the lead up to that match United were terrible and by all means we should have put the boots to them, instead we made them look much the better side and beating us was quite comfortable. So what went wrong and what can we do to improve in this fixture? Well in many ways that game parallels what we just saw versus Burnley, ultimately we created a lot of chances, didn't take enough of them and defensive calamity allowed United to easily score. There were two main issues for Chelsea's defenders in that game, allowing 2v1s to occur out wide with our wingers not adequately dropping to help our fullbacks and midfield runners not being tracked by our midfielders and that extra man allowing them to create opportunities from lofted balls into the box. This combined with our inability to close down their creative players quickly, inability to retain the ball for extended periods and general lack of control over the game inevitably led us to losing this match. We see instances of all these issues in both of their goals. For McTominay's first, it actually starts with us winning the ball, but not being able to retain it. We give it away, the left fullback isn't tracked, and the cross comes in for free. The following shot is blocked, but the ball ricochets to the big Scott, who is completely unmarked as he's drifted into the box from a deeper position, and unchallenged, he easily slams the ball into the net for 1-0. We get back into the game via Cole Palmer, who else? But in the second half, the same issues keep happening and the second goal inevitably comes. This time it's a winger who's not tracked and the cross is free to come in, find the head of McTominay who once again isn't dealt with and he bullets the ball into the net with a header. We were not at the races all game. We looked like we had no energy, didn't want to do the hard work and couldn't score the simple chances. One look at the YouTube comment section from the highlights of this game is very telling. It's all United fans saying how happy they were with the energy and drive of their team. We didn't have any of that. So what can we do differently? How do we stop those things from happening again? Well, first and foremost, as I just said, we have got to work harder. Earn the right to play, win the individual duels, mark our men, track our runners, and just show that we won't be pushed over. United gained so much confidence just by way of us not standing in their way and allowing them to enact their game plan. We must disrupt their rhythm, win the ball back, but keep a hold of the ball, slow it down. The reverse fixture was almost like a basketball game, back and forth with no time to rest, and that favoured United more than it favoured us. In this game, I want to see us have extended periods of possession, pass the ball neatly with purpose, and go forward when the opportunity to do so arises. Don't force it. We overplayed last time and kept giving the ball away rather than playing the simple passes and pulling the opposition out of position. I believe if we play slower and methodically manoeuvre the United press, as we've shown we are able to do in the past, then we will have more success. 
We did create a lot of chances in that game, most of which came from Madrid dropping centrally into a pocket of space to collect the ball and turn and dribble forward. I believe that we can do that again, and with Mudrick in much better form now than he was back then, I reckon he won't fluff his lines as often as he did in the reverse fixture. He has the eye for a pass, and it's that vision and execution that allowed us to get back into the game as he picked out Palmer for his goal. I think these two objectives go hand in hand, we can wait until that pocket of space opens up, play into it and create chances from there. All that's left to do is to take our chances, which hasn't been the greatest ability of ours all season in truth. After how poor we were versus Burnley, I would expect some kind of reaction from the players, and I hope that our finishing is much better and we won't have to rely on Palmer to bail us out again. For a score prediction, I'm not going to be predicting a Chelsea win. I think the game will be close, but I don't have faith in us to close out this game, despite all the issues United have at the moment. I predict a similar affair to what happened last time, a game that we should be comfortably winning but end up losing. I'm going to shoot for 3-2, with Rashford getting one, Hoyland getting one, and McTominay scoring the winner. For Chelsea, I reckon Palmer will continue his goalscoring efforts alongside Connor Gallagher. We'll have to wait until the game to see if any of my predictions are correct, and as always I'll be live streaming after the game to give my first reactions, but if you can't wait until then, maybe watch one of these two videos on screen in the meantime. Thank you guys so much for watching, and remember, in the rain or in the dry, keep that blue flag flying high. Come on you blues!